Hi there, I'm Tiffany Sharschmidt, and I'm a physician scientist quite literally born and bred here at UCSF. I was actually born at Moffitt Hospital, and I spent many weekends in my childhood tinkering around in my dad's lab at Parnassus. Eventually, I thought I should formalize the relationship, and I came here for medical school, and I, I haven't looked back. UCSF has been a part of my training at every stage, and I'm incredibly grateful for this institution, as well as the tremendous research community we have here. So where's my training led me? Well, clinically I'm a dermatologist and I specialize in caring for patients with inflammatory skin disease. And in the lab, I'm fascinated by microbiology and immunology. So something you may not know is that in each square centimeter of our skin, we have over a million bacteria and an equal number of immune cells. And these bacteria and immune cells live not only in close proximity to one another, but continual dialogue. What's astounding really is that for most of us with healthy skin, this crosstalk doesn't lead to skin inflammation. On the other hand, over a billion people worldwide suffer from inflammatory skin diseases, things like eczema, psoriasis, and many others you haven't heard of. Now, these disorders can be really debilitating for patients. Skin pain or skin itching can prevent sleep, make it hard to get up and go to work or school. And for others, their skin disease really feels like a disfigurement, leading to their social isolation or depression. So what's going on? Well, we understand that these disorders are complex, but we also know now that the inflammation in these patients' skin is due in large part to bad decisions by their immune system in response to skin bacteria. Most of us have traveled by plane, and we can think about our immune system in some senses like the TSA. It needs to be able to recognize and respond quickly to dangerous items that pose a threat to safety, but it can't overreact to every benign object with a similar appearance. In my lab, what we really, really want to understand is how we distinguish microbial friend from foe. What are the cues the different bacteria provide? And how are these sensed by our immune system such that in a healthy individual, we can easily distinguish the two and mount distinct responses in response to the healthy bacteria, immune tolerance, and in response to the pathogen, protective immunity. And on the flip side, what is going on with these patients with skin disease such that their TSA is flipping out over every cell phone and every laptop? To get technical for just a second, what we've done is to engineer skin bacteria to express a molecule. And this allows us to track in mice the very specific T cells that respond to the healthy bacteria and the pathogen. What we've learned is that from the earliest stages of life, our immune system can easily distinguish these two. The T cells responding to the healthy bacteria are enriched for regulatory T cells, and this means that they can dampen inflammation and promote tolerance. Whereas those responding to the pathogen secrete cytokines that recruit in other cell types to help fend off the bug. Now, historically, dogma would actually suggest that any bacteria should raise alarm bells in our immune system. So really trying to understand what happens in this healthy scenario to allow us uh, to recognize that certain bacteria aren't threatening will really be illuminating. What we hope to do is take advantage of our ability to genetically manipulate skin bacteria and then very specifically study the effect this has on their immune response. Then we can decode what makes for healthy crosstalk versus what leads to inflammatory skin disease. If we can identify different molecules made by healthy bacteria versus pathogens and truly understand how they cue the immune system differently, we can leverage this for therapeutic benefit. For my patients, that could mean the ability to get a good night's sleep, look themselves in the mirror and go to work. But think about other clinical scenarios in which we could apply this, ones where our immune system needs to make that really critical distinction between friend versus foe where we could encourage it to make a better one, perhaps augmenting immunotherapy for cancer or restoring tolerance in the context of autoimmune diseases such as lupus. Think about what we could do, all of us.